everybody, my name is Shane and today I really wanted to sit down because I had received an item in that subscriber mystery box unboxing and I still kind of am planning on doing like a whole video looking into these items. I had an opportunity today to try a couple of the products. The main thing that I wanted to test today was the sponge. Now this was the new Hue shadow switching pan. You can see that it's used. My makeup is done. I did try it in the video but I must say I don't know. Maybe you have to wait till the end of the video <laughs> to learn how I feel about this product. But I'm very excited to give that a try today. And I got a couple other goodies from Ulta as well. And this will be like the first time that I actually show them. I didn't post them on Snapchat or Instagram yet. So you guys are getting a first look at some new products as well. So if you want to see how I create this look and to hear about the new products, then please keep watching. I know it's scary. I know. I, I've been breaking up so bad recently. I don't know why. But yeah, I have a couple of things on my face that I'm not proud of. But hey, we're going to move past that. So I figured I would go through my full face routine really quickly with you guys during this tutorial as well. That way you guys can kind of see if anything has changed. Not really besides I think the last tutorial that you guys had was my uh, giveaway so things haven't really changed the only difference is that when um, I moisturize I try to make sure that I moisturize well before I do my makeup like right after I wash my face in the morning because what I've been noticing is that the moisturizer I'm using is fantastic I'll link it down below if you don't know which moisturizer I'm using from Clinique but I feel like it breaks up my foundation a little bit so hopefully not using it right before I put on my makeup I'm gonna see a difference but we have a lot to talk about so let's go ahead and get started the first step that I'm gonna do is take the urban decay optical illusion primer I introduced also in my giveaway video Ooh, got a lot of primer in that brow girl and my next step is taking a little bit of the strobe cream on my fingers and just working this uh, right underneath where my foundation is gonna go. I've actually been I, I used to like apply it all around my face But now I just kind of concentrate it a little bit on my forehead um, more so uh, Along my cheekbones instead of rubbing it in everywhere um, And then I bring a little bit on my chin and a little bit on my nose as well I don't feel like I have to use it um, all over my face but it's gonna just give you a little bit of a um, natural from within glow. This is my newest friend right here. Ooh, you're probably popping up because of stress. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm like, where is my foundation? Um, I'm still using the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation. I have the color called Light Medium Beige. Honestly, I should have probably gone a shade darker. Um, I'm kind of light right now because I exfoliated my tan off yesterday because I wanted to reapply it tonight. It was a little bit um, splotchy on my arm. I don't know what happened, but I wanted to reapply it. But when I go back and um, get some more of this stuff, I definitely think I'm going to go a shade lighter and try it out for me so um, but that's okay because I've been darkening it up a little bit um, after a concealer with a little bit of bronzer and it's definitely helped and I bring it all the way down to my neck which is definitely gonna you know be a big part in uh, having your foundation blend in with the rest of your body so even if it doesn't match fully if you're just like wearing a high shirt or something I just blend it in uh, wherever you can see skin so I might actually bring it down a little bit on my chest today as well using my beauty blender just to buff that in and I actually use kind of I don't want to say a hard hand but I really push that product into my skin now this foundation is quite full coverage but you can still see a tiny little blemish and honestly that doesn't bother me super bad if anything I feel like it makes your skin look a little more natural um, I don't know unless I'm doing like something super formal where I want my skin to look like porcelain I don't mind a little blemish or two poking out I don't think it makes you ugly or I don't not feel beautiful when I have a blemish but a little bit of coverage just to bring that irritation down a little bit and bring some um, bring that redness down a little bit definitely I, I enjoy that but I don't feel that I need it completely you know completely covered so I'm okay with it poking through just a little bit if I wanted to which I will a little bit just because this one is fresh 
so it's very red. <laughs> I'll go over it with a little bit more foundation, but um, again, this foundation is quite medium to full coverage, um, but you could definitely build it up on any problem areas. So just adding a smidgen bit more just over here. Look at that. We should just leave it like that, not blend it at all. I guess I'll add a little bit more on this side while I'm at it. So definitely buildable, but I feel like it lets your skin breathe. And of course, like I mentioned, you want to bring it down to your neck, especially if it's not a perfect match, at least that way. I feel like it's not as noticeable. I don't know. Maybe I'll look back at this footage and be like, oh my God, what was I talking about? But from here, it looks pretty good. Next up is concealer and I've been still using the Urban Decay All Nighter one. This is in the color called Fair and I think it's fantastic when I, again, I didn't tan. I had to kind of adjust my um, makeup a little bit when I got darker, of course. So this is really great for when I'm really, really pale. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit under my eyes, put it on the normal areas that I would conceal. Get rid of these dark circles, please, because Lord knows I've got no sleep in like six months. If you saw my day in my shoes, you might understand why. And then because this concealer is so light, um, it kind of creates kind of a weird cast. Um, so I'm gonna follow up with my Born This Way concealer, which is just a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna add this tiniest bit because I'm not trying to necessarily add product or coverage. I'm just trying to darken up the concealer a little bit, but I'm almost out of this stuff. So I don't feel like I can keep doing a full face uh, with just the born this way. But this one, this one closely matches my normal skin tone. So um, I feel like it's really good for days that I'm a little bit darker. So once my concealer is on, we're going to go ahead and buff it out. Actually, shoot, while I'm doing this, I kind of forgot. I want to try to get into the habit of doing my eyes first. And I know I've mentioned in the past that that was really difficult for me. Like, I could never, I don't know, doing my eyes before my face makeup was like, I don't know. I don't know if I was just scared of it or just didn't quite know how to make it look good. I don't know. But I was watching a video with Nikki Tutorials and, um, Oh my God, you guys are gonna absolutely kill me because I can't remember his name. Um, but he was doing, she was doing a collaboration with like Beyonce's makeup artist and he's done some other really big people. And one of his like tips of advice was start to, you know, get used to doing your eyes first. And it, it makes sense because, you know, if you have any fallout, it's not gonna ruin the makeup underneath. And for someone who struggles with like dark circles, that's the last thing I want is my, is my eyeshadow, you know, falling on all this concealer that I'm applying. But moral of that story, it's too late. <laughs> and I should have today because I'm trying new eyeshadow, so I don't know the palette, I don't know the fallout, I don't know how it wears, so... But you know what, we're committed just for the future. I wanna try to remind myself to try to do eyes first. We'll see. Now normally I would set my eyes using my... It's almost impossible to find anything in here anymore, I'm telling you. I need to find my Fit Me uh, powder. Now this is the one that I usually use, but I think I want to go back to Airspun for now because this one is so brightening and it's amazing, again, if you're super pale. Um, being a tiny bit darker than I normally am, I almost feel, again, like it creates a weird white cast around uh, kind of my T-zone and underneath my eyes. So this powder, the Airspun, is a little bit darker. So just going in with my Damp Beauty Blender, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this powder, look up, and press it underneath my eyes. I have the wrinkles of an 80-year-old. <laughs> what are you going to do? See, so it's a little bit brightening, but if I applied this one, it would almost look white underneath my eyes. So this is a really nice um, baking powder to use again because it's brightening, but it's not making me look super white. So at this point, I would always just let this set for a couple minutes. I'm gonna move on to my brows. I'm gonna do them off camera just because it's really time consuming and we still have a lot to talk about today. Um, but I am using the Anastasia Brow Wiz. My little spoolie side broke off, so I, uh, luckily I do have a, another spoolie brush here. So I'll be back when these bad boys are filled in. Brows are done and I went ahead and I wiped away the extra powder that was baking on my face. 
face. So now we can finally move on to eyes. So again, this was the product, the Beauty Smart New Hue Eyeshadow Switching Pan. I'm so excited to use this. So we're gonna be using this new product today and we're actually gonna use a couple other new products today that I picked up at Ulta. So if you saw the mystery subscriber box unboxing, you'll see that I got a Revolution palette um, I'm sorry, a Makeup Revolution London Palette Flawless 4. Now, I haven't opened this because I still want to do um, another video including these items. But I went to Ulta and I also picked up the Makeup Revolution, but this is called the Mermaids Forever. It has a bunch of really fun um, eyeshadows on the back. So I figured we would try this. And I also got some um, new ColourPop lipsticks uh, to try today as well. So you're getting a whole bunch in today's video. I hope you're excited about that. First things first, let's go ahead ahead and get the plastic off this palette so we can take a quick look at it. Now I haven't opened the other one as well <clears throat> so I'm not quite sure what it looks like but we'll see this. Oh I can't get it out. <laughs> so we'll take the palette out. Oh okay. I was honestly kind of expecting what? Okay. <laughs> I was kind of expecting it to be blue and like have um you know, the colors on it, anything, kind of to give, I don't know, just, just to kind of let me know that, hey, this was the Blue Mermaids palette. It doesn't say Mermaids Forever on the front, but it does say it on the back. So it's a 32-piece eyeshadow palette. I do like the sleek, sleekness of the black. I just kind of wish the packaging of this matched the packaging um, of the uh, box. That would have been pretty cool. I'm curious now if the red one is also black, so I'll have to be careful when using these palettes. But here are... Our shadows. Let me try to block that mirror a little bit so you're not getting too much of a glare. Um, there's a little plastic protector on it. Now it does have a lot of shimmers. It does have some mattes. I don't tend to like to use shimmers in my crease so I wanted a palette that I made sure had some mattes that I would definitely use. But there's a lot of blues. There's some greens. Um, there's some purples. There's some pinks but then there's some peaches as well which I'm excited about because I had always wanted to get Too Faced peach palette but I haven't gotten my hands on it yet so I wanted something that I could reach to um, during the spring and summertime. So this is really perfect. Let me also go ahead and open up our little um, sponge here. So it says the dry makeup sponge allows you to use the same brush for different eyeshadow colors without mixing the shades or getting your brush wet, which is awesome because I don't spend a lot of money on brushes. Once in a while I'll spend money on one, but usually they'll just come with a palette or like I'll buy a really cheap set of a bunch of brushes. So um, I don't have like a huge variety, but here is what the sponge looks like. Now it does have a cover. It's in like a little aluminum pan here. So it says the large black sponge is used to remove dry powder shadow um, and the small white sponge, which you can actually remove, um, can be, uh, it's for cream or wet shadows and liners. So that's kind of cool, um, but you can probably take it out just to um, you know, clean them and stuff. So. We'll be giving that a try. So I'm gonna put that in front of me as we're working here. And we're basically just seeing if that sponge um, does what it says it does. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm gonna do. And to be honest with you, my makeup brushes are kind of dirty. I'm definitely gonna have to I'm definitely gonna have to wash them um, after today's video, give them a really good cleaning. But let's go ahead and get started here. So first thing I'm gonna do is take this little duo brush. I think it came from an Anastasia brush. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just go ahead and wipe it along the black sponge. Oh wow. I can already see like some shadow that I use. I use this brush pretty much every day. So it's already taking off some of the shadow, which is really interesting. Now the only thing I'm curious about is like how would I rinse or clean the black one? It's kind of like a, almost like a Brillo pad texture. I'm wondering if I can just take it out and rinse it with some water. To clean, remove the sponges from pan and wash up with a wash with a makeup brush cleanser. So uh, squeeze out all the pigment pigment in water and lay flat to dry. So I clean my brushes with a baby wash, so that's just what I'll use, but it seems really easy. So I'm definitely gonna clean that as well with my brushes. But let's go ahead and look in our palette and see kind of what I wanna do. Now I'm wearing a, I'm gonna be wearing an oversized denim jacket today. I have on high-waisted denim pants and then a white top. So I'm think, I think I'm gonna lean more on the blue and green uh, 
spectrum of this palette today, but I want a crease shade. So I think I'm gonna take this peachy shade right here, which just seems like a nice shade to start with. And it seems like it's picking up quite a bit of pigment. 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 Picking up a little bit of pigment. There's definitely kick back there a little bit more um, than what you know I'd want. Do you see all that powder just come out? But let me go ahead and start sweeping this into my crease and see what kind of payoff we're getting here. And because I did clean my brush before I even went into this palette, um, I shouldn't see any traces of any other color that I've used in the past, really just this peach. Okay, so it's definitely showing up um, very, very subtle. I dipped in maybe twice. Now, I also don't have a perfect base. I definitely want to get my hands on um, Max Soft Okra Paint Pot, um, just so, you know, we have a perfect blank canvas basically but I did use a little bit of concealer which um, would help you know take away any discoloration um, but this color is very very light it has some pigment to it gets the job done so our first shade is on that's gonna be my base crease shadow now I want to go into a uh, more dense crease brush something just not as fluffy and what are we gonna do what are we gonna do I don't know you know what? I think I'm gonna go into one of these like teal greens here however uh, most of these have shimmers now these two colors are so similar that I wish they did one matte and one shimmer but they're both shimmer so I think we're gonna work with it you know what it's fine. We're going to go into, let's go into the darker of the two shades. It's only slightly darker. I mean, barely darker. Um, the brush does pick up quite a bit of pigment in this one, and I didn't get as much fallout as I did with that peach shadow, so that's a good sign. I liked when colored um, eyeshadows kind of don't go everywhere. So I'm just going to, again, put this right into my crease. I'm just not going to blend it up as high as the peach, so we can still see that poking through. Okay, again, pigmented. I've definitely seen more pigmented <laughs> eyeshadows in the past, but it's certainly showing up. Yeah, it's very, very soft. Um, I'm curious if I can maybe build it a little bit. Patting it versus, you know, swiping it around definitely gives me a little more pigmentation, but once I go back into a fluffy brush to blend the edges a little bit more, I'm curious if we're gonna lose all the pigmentation that we just worked to get. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go back into our sponge here. Again, I can see all of that eyeshadow coming off, which is great. And then I'm not gonna put anything extra on this, but I'm just gonna go back and try to soften up the edge where the green meets that peach. It seems to be blending, and I'm not losing a ton of that pigmentation, so that's a good thing. So let me go ahead and do the other eye real quick. I'm just going to pat it on right away. I just started trying to swipe it, and it, it wasn't working out. Again, I'm just going to keep building up the color until I'm happy with it. I just want it to be seen after everything is said and done. We still have eyelashes. We still have more shadows. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're not doing all this work for nothing. So again, I got it padded. My brush should still be relatively clean or at least, you know, it doesn't have any new color on it. So we're going to soften up those edges. It does blend out easily. You just lose a little bit of that pigment. So just pat it on and then uh, blend it out ever so slightly. Should I go for like a full blue lid today? I don't know. Is that too much blue? I don't know. I'm going to the circus today, so I guess it doesn't really, I guess it really doesn't matter. We're going to be extra. We're going to be extra today. Sure, why not? So what I'm going to do, actually, I have this flat shader brush I want to go into next. And I do want to wet it, but I do have... Again, a little bit of eyeshadow left on this, so I'm going to wipe that off real quick. All I'm doing is just wiping it on the black part. And then this time, I'm going to take a little bit of my setting spray here. This one is just Master Fix from Maybelline. I'm going to spray the brush a couple of times, and this way we can test out the white sponge as well. And I'm going to pick up one of these blues. I think I'm actually going to start with the lightest shade of blue here, which does have some shimmer. I think all the blues... All the blues and most of the purples are shimmers. There's a couple of matte purples in here though. And I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to start pressing it on the inner about 
third of my lid. This one definitely has more pigmentation than the green, but I did spray it, which is always going to give you more pigmentation. When you use your eyeshadows wet, it just gives it a little more intensity. So I can't say whether that one had, you know, pigmentation right away, but I can keep in mind that if I spray my brush a little bit, that the color is going to be more intense. It's a little bit uh, patchy on this eye. And I honestly feel like that was um, user's error. I feel like I sprayed my brush a little bit too much. So it wasn't really packing on the eyeshadow, but rather lifting it because the brush was too wet. So I'm going to go over it just a little bit, try to fix up any areas that are kind of missing some eyeshadow. Okay, not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and use the white sponge now. Okay. All right, still on my brush. So I'm just going to, okay. So I used the white brush first, but I kept wiping and wiping and wiping and it wasn't completely coming off. So then I just went in and followed up with the black sponge and now my um, brush is clean from blue. So next I'm going to go into this blue shade directly under the one that we just used. Oh, you know what? I didn't spray it. I didn't spray it. And I'm going to pack this one just right over the entire rest of the lid. What's going on? It looks super patchy. You know what? I'm going to use my fingers sometimes that helps the eyeshadows melt like the swatches on my finger is beautiful but transferring it is really difficult okay i think using my finger definitely helps but the problem is like i can't quite get up in that crease with my finger so i'm gonna try to go on my brush again <laughs> okay <laughs> Sorry to laugh, I'm just having a really hard time with this. So I'm just gonna go in immediately with my finger on this eye. Y'all, I'm spraying my finger. <laughs> We're getting some pigment, but it took, you know, some setting spray and using my finger, which the natural heat from my body melts the eyeshadows. So it helps it glide on a little bit better. So once it's applied, again, I'm gonna go back in with this brush and kind of help push it into that crease where my fingers can't quite reach. That was a journey. <laughs> that was truly a journey. So now we're gonna help the blue and the green blend into one another. So for this, I'm gonna take an even smaller crease brush. This one actually came from the Urban Decay Vice 4 palette, I believe. And as a transition shade, I actually wanna use one of these lavenders because one's more pinky, one's more purple, but um, I want a matte shade in my crease. So I'm gonna go in and you use this right in between the blue and the green. Yeah, I gotta be honest, you can barely see this. I mean, <laughs> oh, again, I'm gonna try wetting this brush a little bit. I, I, I see no purple whatsoever. This time I'm not gonna tap it off, see if that helps. Gonna switch to my magnifying side as well. Okay, I'm seeing the slight, I mean the slightest bit of purple, so but you know what? It is helping the colors blend into one another. Regardless, okay, I can see a little bit of that purple. Actually, there's some fallout falling on my lid as well. So it's definitely helping the colors blend. I'm just not really getting a lot of color payoff from it. So I'll definitely have to try that again. Um, maybe just in a purple look and use it all over my lid or something. Oh. Okay, this side I'm seeing it a little bit better. I'm gonna give this color the benefit of the doubt. It is going up against a very green green and a very blue blue, so it might just be outshined a little bit, but again, it is getting the job done. It's helping me blend out that crease. I'm getting a little bit of fallout on my cheeks. I'm just gonna wipe away. I wanna deepen up the outer crease and the outer V a little bit, so I'm gonna try another purple. Let me go ahead and wipe off this brush here. Now because I wet it, I'm using the white sponge first and then I'm going to follow up with that black sponge. Okay, look how blue my finger is. <laughs> Alright, to deepen up the a crease and the outer V, I'm going to use one of these dark purple shades. I think I'm going to go with the more plum, the darker of the two, just a little bit. I didn't mean for today's look to be so colorful, but hey, it's fine. So I'm just gonna do the exact same process, but this time I'm just kind of swirling it in the outer, in the outer half of my crease instead of bringing it all the way in like we did with that first purple. And then I'm just going to pat it into the outer V just a little bit. Honestly, this color is kind of having a hard time shining through as well, and I don't necessarily wanna wet it. I don't like to wet my crease shade, so 
I don't know. I'm, I'm just not, what is that? I don't know. I'm not really feeling that one either. So I think I'm going to go in. There's like a matte brown. You're barely matte. <laughs> matte brown and uh, use this instead. Yeah, that, that one's showing up for sure. Ooh. Ooh, that fallout. <laughs> Should have done my eyes first. I'll learn my lesson for next time. All right, honestly, that's as probably good as it's gonna get. It doesn't look horrendous. <laughs> it just, it looks kind of like a mush of colors, to be honest with you. Wipe this away. Hopefully liner and all that good stuff will fix it. I feel like I could have gone higher in the crease with the green, but I wanted the peach to show through which to be honest with you isn't really showing up at all at this point with all these other eyeshadows so i'm just gonna go back in quickly with some green i still have it on this brush because i didn't use this brush for anything else it looks like a big bowl of mush fantastic so i've gone ahead and i've skipped a step on off camera i took my nyx jumbo eye pencil and milk i've done this a thousand times but if you're new i just put them on my waterline and then i put a little bit underneath my eyes not only does this make my eyes look bigger but i feel like it helps the shadows stick as well so we're gonna try to redeem one of these purples right now by applying it underneath my lash line but first i want to highlight my inner corner i always like highlighting before i put on any other shadows so i am gonna try one of these highlighting shades and this is really pretty white one with some shimmer and it reminds me of my Carly Bible one that I'm a big fan of so just taking it on a little brush I'm just going to pack this right in my inner corner Ooh, okay this by far is my favorite shadow that we've used <laughs> all right next I'm going to take a small little pencil brush which is the opposite side of the green brush that we used and I think I'm gonna go right back into that same first purple shadow I'm curious if this thing has pigment on its own or if it was just you know having issues so just taking a little bit of it definitely making sure I'm tapping it off I am just going to sweep this on my lower lash line right over that white still having a hard time showing up all right when i don't tap it off <laughs> that's when i see that pigment but then i also have the issue of fallout on my cheekbones i think the purple is very subtle it's definitely there um but i feel like the color on top definitely grabs the attention which is what i wanted i didn't want a rainbow on my face today but that's kind of what it turned into it's very mermaid though I'm planning a mermaid party for my toddlers the same colors it looks fantastic but I feel like that purple redeemed itself a little bit I've used better purples in the past but it does get the job done um, I just feel like it was a little bit weird that when I tapped it off I got no pigment so it wasn't quite worked into the bristles so I don't know Ow. All right, so that is it for the eyeshadow palette. So I'll tell you guys my final opinions at the end, but let's go ahead and finish up here. Now you guys may remember that I haven't checked the store since, but I believe that they discontinued my Hard Candy liquid liner, at least in the Walmart that I always got it. So I'm using a L'Oreal one. I'm not the biggest of fan. I don't think it's as long lasting, but it works, so we're gonna use it. Now it's funny because I did actually take the Hard Candy brush and put it in the L'Oreal products because the L'Oreal brush was okay. It was just much shorter than the Hard Candy one. So I wasn't quite used to it and I kept screwing up. I, I just couldn't get my liner right. So I just switched brushes, but this brush is getting old. So all of the bristles are starting to like so I have to keep cutting the bristles off one by one and eventually I'm not going to be left with a brush. And that's going to be a sad day and I'll have to figure out something else. The other thing I noticed with this one as well is it doesn't dry as fast as the hard candy. So normally I'd go in right away with mascara, but this needs a second to dry. So instead we're going to go in with a bit of bronzer. Okay, I see the I see the look. It's pulling together. I'm, I'm, I'm still going out tonight wearing this, but... It could have been better. Anyways, a little bit of Capri Coast bronzer. To be honest with you, I'm not sure at what point my camera started, stopped recording and my memory card filled up, but we're on to bronzer because I was waiting for this liquid liner to dry. I'm just using Becca's Capri Coast and I'm just bronzing up my face just a little bit. Oh, hello. How are you today? Nice and irritated? Fantastic. A little bit of L'Oreal's Telescopic. This is a staple. I love this mascara. I think I've mentioned this before, but if you didn't know this, mascara is one of the very few items that I don't spend a lot of money on. Like, I very rare. <laughs> Ooh. 
we're gonna wait for it to dry, we're moving on. I very rarely buy mascara from high-end, uh, like Sephora, Ulta, I really stick to drugstore brands because I feel like, especially for someone like me who, if I'm wearing makeup, I'm gonna be wearing false lashes as well. I don't need my real lashes to look, I don't know, I feel like the mascaras that are like, it looks like you're wearing fake lashes. You have to start with long lashes. There has not been a mascara that I felt like gave me the same kind of length and volume. I will say I did enjoy the Better Than Sex because it was just very black and it definitely made my natural lashes look better. So maybe, you know, if you're a person that wears minuscule makeup or just loves their mascara, isn't into falsies, sure, spend some money on mascara. For me personally, ugh, I'd rather spend my money on something a little bit different. Um, same thing goes with li uh, liquid liner. I don't feel, I used my hard candy one for eight years and I loved it. Um, high end ones, eh, I don't feel like you need to spend your money on it to be completely honest with you. Face products, face care, um, you know, eyeshadows, anything that has to do with the face, like highlighters, um, blushes can go either way. There are some high-end blushes I've had my hands on, but I think, you know, at the same time, there are also some perfectly good um, drugstore ones. I love my Milani ones, although I've been having an issue with some of the pigmentation with some of them. Um, you really should just play with makeup and just return what you don't like and keep trying. Um, if you're a makeup lover, that should be no problem. Try a new product every day if you want to. Um, until you find your holy grail. I'm still gonna let that mascara sit for a minute because I'm worried about smudging. I want it completely dried before I try and get before I try uh, scraping it off. So I'm gonna throw on some lashes and I'm actually using some new lashes. They're a little more expensive than my other ones. Also lashes is something I like spending money on as well. Um, I totally meant to save the box for you guys and I, I must have just completely forgot because I don't have it anywhere. Um, but that's another thing I'll link for you below. Everything that I'm using in today's video is gonna have a link below. So if you wanna get your hands on anything, um, then just, just refer to that so uh, the lashes will be included but you can find them. I found mine at Ulta. I don't know if they're car carried uh, in Sephora yet. All right my eyelashes are getting tacky so I'm gonna let them sit for a minute. We are gonna move on and take a look at the Trifecta ColourPop lip packet that I have here. Now it's a Trifecta because it has three different products which I'm excited about because they're also all different finishes. So we have one which is called My Jam. It's an extra glossy lip and I've never tried a gloss from ColourPop so this is something new. Also we have Rain which is an ultra ultra satin lip and one of my favorite lipsticks that I use all the time is an ultra satin and that's Aquarius also from ColourPop so I'm excited to try that one and then we also have Naughty which is an ultra matte lip. Now I kind of forget what they look like. I was saving it for this video um, so we're going to pull it out and see if any would go with today's look but I'm going to swatch them very quickly for you. Ooh. I think this one might be our winner. Uh, but we have, this one is called My Jam. So this was the glossy one for sure. Ultra, ultra glossy lip. And it almost looks like a uh, like super metallic goldy bronze. So I'm excited to try that. We also have Naughty, which is the, it doesn't want to focus. We have Naughty, which is the ultra, ultra satin lip, which might be today's winner. Ah, I'm sorry, this one is the matte one. And then Rain here is our ultra satin lip. So there is Rain. I'm gonna do a couple really quick swatches with them. So we're gonna do the ultra glossy. I'm curious if this gloss is like a sticky gloss. So actually I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand. Okay, yeah, definitely a little bit of stick to it, but it's super shimmery. It has some really nice um, like glitter pigments in it as well. Again, it just kind of looks like a liquid metal color, so it's really pretty. I'm curious about how it wears. Um, then we have the Ultra uh, Matte Lip, um, which is naughty, which I think will, again, be our winner today. Ooh, it came out fast. <laughs> but it's right underneath, and it looks so pretty. And then our Matte Lip, which is kind of like a reddish orange. Ooh, it's really pretty. 
And that is that one. Oh, my lashes! I forgot about my lashes. They're probably dry by now. Good lord, where's my tweezers? I got so into those liquid lipsticks. I forgot about the freaking lashes. Where is my tweezers? I just had them. I used them to open the... Oh, lordy. Oh, gosh. Please don't be, like, completely dry yet. Oh, boy. Okay, I think... Oh, there's one. I think we just made that one. <laughs> I realize that I laugh at myself all the time. I notice that when I'm editing. I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm hilarious. Okay, lashes are pressed down. I'm gonna try to get rid of this little piece of schmegma. <clears throat> Guys, I think this is why I don't record makeup tutorials as much anymore because I feel like every time I do, something goes terribly wrong. So it's almost like the universe just doesn't want me to anymore. I get so nervous with makeup tutorials. I don't know why. You know what? It's gonna live there, it's fine. It's barely nose. <laughs> I'm the worst beauty guru ever. It's fine, guys. It looks fine. It looks fine. Okay, while my lashes completely dry, I'm gonna go over them in just a moment with some liquid liner, but we're gonna move on to the lips, which <gasps> we can use another product. Your girl's lips are so crusty. We're gonna try this product today. So this again came from that subscription box. So this is the lip scrub, the coffee lip scrub and I, I haven't used it because again I've been waiting to do a video for you guys you're welcome but this is what it is if you or this is what it looks like if you missed that video it has like some grains in it I did not expect that texture it almost feels like a jelly but with coffee grounds in it okay let's give this a try scrub brush rinse lick now the lush lip scrubs, I would lick off. That doesn't bother me. This one, it has a pleasant smell because it smells like coffee, but I have no desire to eat it. So I'm just gonna rub this off real fast. I'll be right back. Mm, you know what though? My lips feel nice. This is really good. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna throw this in my bag now. Now that I used it, I can actually enjoy it. Fantastic. All right, we're gonna go into Naughty here and apply this all over our lips. Just wanna make sure it's completely dry. I'm not gonna lie. I have a little lip pimple if you see it there. Now, that because this isn't a matte, it's a satin, it is going to dry, but it's not gonna be as drying as a matte is. Sometimes mattes, sometimes mattes can be a little bit too uncomfortable, depending on the brand. Some brands aren't as drying. Um, I feel like ColourPop, eh, it's a little uncomfortable after a while, um, but I feel like with the satin lips, it's just a little more moisturizing. It still dries down pretty relatively matte, um, but it's not so just like, like sandpaper. So I really like the satin lips. I love the color. It's a nice nude, and I feel like it complements today's look really well. I'm, oh, hmm. I feel like I'm gonna use the gloss just just a smidgen. I'm gonna put it just kind of on the center of my lips because I'm not the biggest fan of lip glosses when they're sticky. Ugh. But anywho, that completes today's makeup look. Again, I'm gonna go over the lash band with a little bit of liquid liner just to help the falsies blend in. But we are done putting on the makeup. I'm going to give you my final thoughts in just a second. Oh my God, I was taking a screenshot and I just realized something. I didn't highlight or use blush. So real quick, we're gonna take the Milani blush in Luminoso. Oh my God. Ooh, and this blush brush has had its, had its day. This is, this is a lost hope. Anyways, go into our Luminoso and blush it up, baby boo. My goodness. And last but not least, I, I was really excited about this product because I've been using it for a while, but I don't think it's been introduced in any video yet, but it's the Amarezzi Anastasia Beverly Hills Highlighter. Are you ready for this? Look at that wave. Ooh, ah. Mm. I actually showed my husband this. That's how excited I was about this. I was like, babe, you want to see a highlighter? He's like, no. I said, I'm going to show you a highlighter because it's amazing. Look at that. Oh my God. So to use this because it is a powder, but can I just, for just a moment. For a moment like this, some people wait forever for that one special kiss. 
Oh! I'm just going to take my e.l.f. highlighting brush here. You just need a little bit to be honest with you. It picks up quite a bit. And let's glow, baby. One of my favorite things to be doing is I introduce also the cover cover effects. Where is that? <laughs> well, why would I be able to find it? It's only a video. I introduced the color cover effects custom enhancer drops in the color called a moonlight uh, in my last tutorial as well. And a lot of the times I'll put the drops on, let it dry almost all the way, and then apply this highlighter if I want to be that extra. But it's so beautiful. But today's video, I'm just going to apply this so we can appreciate this highlighter on its own. Oh, you know you're going everywhere. Oh, oh, <laughs> Ooh. yes. Okay, now I'll be back with my final thoughts. Ta -da! Okay, that is it, you guys. That is the completed look. So what are my final thoughts about this sponge? Honestly, oh, my nose is running. Now, of course, I haven't tried to clean it yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be quite easy. Um, just a little bit of baby soap. I don't expect any real problems. So I can just kind of assume for now that it's gonna be an easy process. If I find out differently when I do go and clean this, I will definitely let you know and update you about that. Um, but I think the idea was really cool too, and it really seemed to work, which was the best part it actually said what it was gonna do now it didn't clean my brushes to the point of where you know I wouldn't have to wash them but it definitely got a lot of the extra pigment stuck in the bristles out so I was able to switch to a new shadow and not have to worry about any colors mixing which I think is fantastic the white part seemed to do its job now when I was wiping the colored eyeshadow on the white definitely there was still some left on my brush and that's why I followed up with the black um, much coarser part of the sponge but it did still get it off but it was just kind of like a two-step process I'm really excited to have this in my makeup collection I'm actually gonna put it in the train case that I use every day all my like go-to products are in there um, I was really excited to use this lip scrub the texture threw me off for a second I was expecting it to be a little bit harder but it was a very soft gelatin um, but you could definitely feel those grains in there now it did mess up of course the smooth consistency which I'm like oh it's so pretty I hate touching new products but but what's the point of buying products if you're not going to use them, right? So I do love this. This is definitely going into my bag because I wear so many liquid lips. Of course, today we chose satin lip, but mostly I choose liquid lipsticks. So my lips tend to be dry. I'm actually going to put them right in here because this is like my everyday lipstick collection and a bottle of Advil. <laughs> but I was so excited to also try out this uh, trifecta from Ulta in the brand ColourPop. I'm excited to see if they come out with any more collections. It's so cool that I don't actually have to order all ColourPops. There is a very small selection at the moment, but um, it's nice to not have to order and wait for your shipment. You can just walk into Ulta and walk out with some ColourPop, which is amazing. <laughs> Last but not least, the Make Makeup Revolution palette. This is just the box, the palettes. Um, they there are pros and cons to this, definitely. I don't think they're really it's going to be difficult to find an eyeshadow palette where you love every single eyeshadow and every single eyeshadow doesn't have a lot of kickback or, you know, the pigmentation is there, um, the longevity is there. So I think any palette is going to kind of have that fault. Um, what I found in this palette is some colors seem to work a little bit better than others. It was definitely more kickback in some than others. I, I don't really necessarily knock a palette um, for any kickback. I love the Anastasia subculture, which is like the queen of kickback back I feel like I don't know I feel like the colors can kind of make up for that sometimes um, but I definitely love the big mirror it's definitely dirty with all my fingerprints Ugh. I don't think it has to no, know it doesn't have like a plastic over it you can peel off anyways that's okay because honestly I don't really use the mirrors but it is nice to have one if I happen to not have one with me um, it has a nice variety of colors again I'm really excited about like these peaches I don't know there's a lot more eyeshadows that we can try in this palette and it, it makes me excited to try try the where is it? The Flawless for as well. And honestly, I really wish the packaging was the same color because it would be like, oh, the blue one, you know, is the mermaid one and 
well, I don't know if this is gonna be red or not, but the red one, um, you know, I can reach for it easily instead of reading the back. So there are just like little things. If you wanna add some color into your collection, I think this is a great place to start. Again, everything that I used in today's video is gonna be listed below, the old and the new. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm so excited that we did a makeup tutorial today and got to play with some new makeup. So if you did enjoy, please leave a like, and if you don't wanna miss any new videos, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hopefully will see you in my next one. Bye guys.